Hello everyone, my name is Matt Anderson, I'm a PE Chemical, and this video is to look at the FE Chemical Exam, uh, giving you an overview of what to expect. So I want to start with a quote because if you're watching this video, you're probably uh, preparing for the PE exam or FE exam or thinking about it, and so this is by David Allen, who wrote the excellent book, Getting Things Done. And so he said, I'm always amazed at the power of clear observation, simply about what's going on, what's true. And so what this means is more or less if you're going to dive into a new topic or um, basically anything, uh, the best thing to do first is just to get the simple facts down in front of you to understand what they are. So as a FE chemical exam overview, FE stands for Fundamentals of Engineering. There's various disciplines, so you can take it for chemical, civil, mechanical, electrical, etc. And the test is administered by NCEES. NCEES is the National Council of Examiners for engineering and surveying. So this is a national organization, and I make that point because when it comes time to apply for your PE license, that's done through your state licensing board. Uh, but the NCES is a national organization, so everyone goes through the same process to take your FE exam. And the website is nces.org, so if you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend it. And then a uh, first question, is it free? No, it's not. It's $175 payable directly to NCES. For exam logistics, to register for the exam, you have to set up an account. That's your kind of your first step. You go to nces.org and you set up your My NCES account. And uh, once you have your account set up, you can then register for the FE exam. So the FE exam, it's not as if there's only a couple dates a year. It is completed year-round at approved Pearson View test centers. So when you actually register for the exam on their website, you'll be able to select what uh, center to register at. And so not all Pearson View test centers will have available appointments for every day, but so you can kind of look around and there, there's, uh, uh, they're all over the place, so you shouldn't have difficulty finding a test. Um, and then the exam is computer-based, so when you actually go to the test that day, you'll be working off a computer. There's, there's no paper that you'll be filling in bubbles or anything like that. And so the most recent FE chemical pass rate, and this is published by NCES, was 73%. Uh, that does come with a couple of caveats. That's uh, the chemical pa that's the pass rate for students that um, took the FE exam for the first time, attended ABET accredited engineering programs, and then they took the FE exam within 12 months of graduation. Some additional information. So when you go to take the exam, the only reference material that you'll have is the NCES FE reference handbook. And so that will be available as a PDF file. And so immediately I know what you're thinking, and you're correct that Control F is your friend during the test. So if there's a topic you're not sure about, you can search for it in the document and find, and you may be able to find some useful equations or even information. And so this reference handbook, it's not a secret or anything. It can be downloaded for free from your My NCES account. And so you can download it beforehand and get very familiar with it so that when you come to, comes to take the test, you'll be very comfortable with the reference material that you have. And so the exam, it's pretty long. It lasts five hours and 20 minutes, and you do get one scheduled 25-minute break. So my advice for that is pack yourself a snack because you'll want a, a little bit of a break halfway through and kind of reset your mind. And then it's 110 questions. So this is kind of our first math problem here. So if there's 320 minutes, five hours, 20 minutes, divided by 110 questions, that gives you a little bit less than three minutes per question, 2.91 minutes. And so it's really important to be able to pace yourself on the test because you don't want to spend 30 minutes on a question or else you'll be, uh, you'll definitely have difficulty finishing all 110. So uh, the NCES, they also publish all the exam topics and uh, it really isn't a surprise about what you're going to be tested on going into the exam. Uh, they do try and, I think they do a pretty good job of, of communicating the topics that they're going to test you on and, and also how many questions per exam topic. So this information is accurate for tests July 1st, 2020 going forward. So up until July 1st, 2020, there's a different um, number of subjects and number of questions uh, per subject on the exam. Uh, so if you're, watch if you're taking the test anytime after July 1st, 2020, this is, this is accurate. Uh, if you're taking it sooner than that, it's very similar, but you should go to the NCES website and look for um, FE chemical exam topics just to make sure that you're getting the most updated information. Uh, so the subjects are, uh, there's 17, I think, and the first is mathematics, so that's 6 to 9, probability statistics, engineering sciences, material sciences. And so those numbers next to it are the number of questions on the exam. So, for example, for mathematics, you can express expect 6 to 9 questions specifically about math on your exam. And then you have uh, chemistry and biology, fluid dynamics, uh, mechanics, thermodynamics, that's a big one, material energy balances, that's 10 to 15 questions, but it's okay because I take care of it for you right there. So in equals out, and you should be fine on all your material energy balances questions. Uh, heat transfer, mass transfer and separation, solids handling, chemical reaction engineering. 
economics, process design, process controls, safety, health, and environment. Don't pollute. I just took care of those five to eight questions for you. And then uh, ethics and professional practice. So some advice I have you uh, have for you on the test day. These are just all very practical suggestions, nothing too revolutionary. Uh, the first is remember your calculator. And also you can only use sp certain calculators on the FE and PE exam. So TI, you have two options. You can either take a 30X or 36X. And there's lots of like sub models of both 30X and 36X. So you can just, uh, but, but basically anything with TI 30X or 36X in the name is gonna be fine. And then the Casio FX 115. Uh, once again, I recommend you get this well before your exam so that when you're preparing for the exam and studying, you can use your calculator that you're actually going to be using on the exam. Uh, you know, like most engineers, I use the TI-84, TI-86, most of the way through you know, high school and college. But uh, you have to take a step back and use a scientific calculator. And these calculators cost about $20, um, even as low as, I think, $12 on Amazon. So it's not like they're expensive. So I would just buy one beforehand to, to practice with it. The second is remember your ID, you know, your driver's license. And then uh, the third one is to arrive early to provide an additional layer of protection against the aforementioned calculator and ID. So for my PE exam, I actually forgot my calculator, but I got there so early I had time to run to the Walmart that was close by, buy a calculator, and then get back in time, you know, for, for the start of my exam. Um, so that would have been really bad if I would have gotten there late and forgot my calculator. Uh, eat breakfast, uh, for sure. Uh, bring a snack. Uh, it's, it's a long test. And then pace yourself. So as I mentioned before, it's easy to lose track of time in 110 question exam. We just did the math in that other slide. So about, you know, a little bit less than three minutes per question. And then in terms of uh, FE exam, general test prep, this is not specific to, you know, how to study for certain topics. I do plan on releasing additional videos and hopefully helpful reference material for the FE exam for chemical. Uh, but in the meantime, these are just very general tips. So there are practice exams that are available for purchase on NCES.org. I highly recommend purchasing at least one. They are $30, so it's a very good investment, especially if you're considering taking the FE exam for $175. And then they contain solutions. So you're able to work on the problem, go check the solution, and make sure that you're doing it correctly. Uh, there's various study guides available on Amazon, and these are, you know, essentially textbooks or even larger than many textbooks. The one that I used was FE Chemical Review Manual by Michael R. Lindenberg. And what's very helpful is that there's so many topics that's covered on the test, and then this one book is able to provide some reference material on each topic. So you can kind of just go topic by topic and refresh yourself, especially in the ones that you feel weakest on. And then I, I, I really recommend setting a firm date uh, or at least a month for when you plan on taking the test. So you can go ahead and schedule your test date several months in advance. But if you don't feel ready for that, at least choose, you know, for example, we're in April 2020. And so you choose December 2020 for your test. You need six months. So maybe you start July 1st with your study program. And then each individual will need different amounts of prep. And generally, if you've been out of school longer, you'll need to prepare more. I was out of school um, about a year and a half when I took the FE exam. And my study uh, program consisted of the FE Chemical Review Manual. I went topic by topic, and then also uh, practice exam questions. I didn't take a course. There are courses available that I've seen being advertised online. I don't know a whole lot about them. Um, I think that if you have been able to get through your BS degree in chemical engineering in school, that you are more than capable of developing a study plan for yourself and, and going about it. Uh, however, if you, if you really want that additional structure, then um, you can research those as well. Uh, but for now, best of luck. Good luck studying.